Hello Rachel. So I have seen your video regarding uh, the subscriber contest around the number 666 and uh, of course all the things satanic around it. So um, as a topic uh, that is somewhat quite uh, deep in my part of the trailer park so um, sure I had to answer, sure I had to make my own video. First of all, it didn't take very long to compile all the records, CDs and tapes I'm going to show now, which in itself is probably a little questionable. Then again, I have never been really interested in the Dark Lord, nor have I ever been in cahoots with him or her. But uh, it's probably true that uh, once you invite the strange into your life, for example in the realm of art and music. Um, usually where the strange arrives, uh, Mr. Lucifer is not that far behind, which probably explains some of the tasteless uh, examples uh, in my music collection. So um, I would like to up the ante a little bit and show at least 15 uh, records or compilations dealing with such a dark matter. I certainly would like to rank them in a very weird way. What I mean by that is that uh, I'd like to start with all this music that is just kind of flirting with a particular word without any kind of uh, occult intentions behind it. Um, so uh, let's put out the harmless stuff out of the way and slowly work our way into the darkest underground. There are some covers here that I will not show into the camera for obvious reasons, just because that's basically hardcore pornography. And um, even I am somewhat evolving and maturing and uh, I don't believe that it's, my, that it's my place to show stuff like that and to be entirely ignorant about children, for example. I mean, it's not, it's not for everyone and uh, so uh, 20 years ago I would just think I don't give a damn. But hey, I'm changing. Mm. So let's start with, with stuff that, is, um, that could not be more harmless. So let's begin with a really sweet example and that is the album Eve by the Alan Parsons Project. Starting with a track called Lucifer, rather famous uh, instrumental track released in 1979 as far as I remember. Yeah, correctly. So uh, next round goes to one of my favorite records actually, the first album by Bill Bruford, feels good to me, a uh, fantastic uh, jazz fusion with Bill Bruford on drums, the epic Alan Holdsworth on guitar, Jeff Berlin on bass and Dave Stewart on keyboards with wonderful vocal performances by Annette Peacock and uh, the opening track is called Beelzebub. What else is there to say? Well, it's another great example of using a certain terminology without the heart being in it. Trilogy by Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Now, where is the reference, you may wonder? But um, the last track is called Abaddon's Bolero. And uh, Abaddon is... Uh, kind of a Hebraic aspect of the hell, so the place where the Dark Lord resides and rules. And um, Keith Emerson always had a little bit of a flirtation with uh, such topics, unlike his two bandmates. How do I know it? Well, because already years prior to that, with his first band, Nice, um, he released a track called Azrael revisited as an opener to the third album. And uh, Azrael, of course, is uh, the angel of death. 
And while originally Azrael doesn't have anything to do with uh, Satan himself, um, during the course of uh, the Renaissance and Baroque, uh, the term, particularly in the European culture, the term became constantly associated with uh, the hell and uh, the rather Luciferian spheres where Azrael uh, was a popular angel of death and vengeance. So, um, let's get to the next example. Again, just uh, playing with the word without any serious intentions behind it. Uh, this is an album by the Cassandra Complex called Satan, Bugs Bunny and Me. Which is a great title, by the way. No one will mistake you for a Satanist with that album title. Cassandra Complex. Now this is more a step into some serious territory, but uh, again, the Dark Lord must be regarded in more a metaphorical way here and more in the spirit of a cultural critique. This is the album You Must Be Certain of the Devil by the American singer and composer Diamanda Galas, probably the gloomiest musician that ever lived in California. So, let's continue. Now let's go back to the 60s. This is the second album by the band Black Widow called Sacrifice. Now, of all the things I've shown you here, this is probably the only band that kind of had uh, somewhat a serious satanic proclivities, at least so they claimed. Uh, they were certainly kind of an enfant terrible of the psychedelic rock scene. Particularly because they perform things like that on stage. Now, unlike Black Sabbath, uh, they were kind of the real thing. Yeah, I mean, we all know now that Black Sabbath were pretending, don't we? The album was released in 1970. It didn't cause as much scandal as you would probably expect. And um, I guess there's always the cultural theory that... Uh, things don't go forward in a straight line and that actually we right now live in a time that is probably much less tolerant and that explodes much easier in all levels of uh, offense and shitstorms and cancel culture and everybody's offended by something. I guess back in the day people just kind of shrugged this off so yeah there's a band that is satanic. I think people were pretty fascinated by Rosemary's Baby coming out a year prior to that. So uh, that sacrifice by Black Widow. And uh, yeah, let's get to some CDs. Here is a compilation uh, called Emblems by the British uh, underground band Current 93. Um, one of the songs here is called The Descent of Long Satan and Babylon. And while David Tibet of Karin 93 had been musing quite a lot about Satan in his music, um, it should always be understood as a encounter with allegory, with the mythology, and with certain aspects of cultural perception. Artists like that should not be mistaken for Satanists, although it has been done quite a lot. And uh, a lot of people have been, have been accused of Satanism um, while being just interested in the duality of the human condition. Whatever that means. You know, the Jungian thing. Um, so where to continue? Um, uh, yeah, um, this is kind of a band that uh, built their entire reputation on... Uh, Announcing the Antichrist. This is a Swedish uh, industrial and power electronica band in Slaughter Natives. 
Uh, this is a little, little bad for the camera because it's a very dark picture. The album is called Enter Now the World. We know who they are talking about, huh? Um, the second track is called To Megatrion, which is Old Greek for the Grand Beast. And while talking about the Grand Beast, let's go to the man himself, none other than Elias the Crowley. <laughs> the father of it all. Um, this is a uh, kind of slightly anonymous uh, CD that was uh, released in the early 90s that uh, contains uh, hymns recorded by Elias Crowley. So those are still recorded on these kind of uh, uh, wax cylinders. So this is more something for the collector. Unless you are kind of a maniacal Crowleyanity fanatic, which I most certainly am not, um, it's not particularly interesting. Um, here is a compilation that uh, was uh, released by the Necrophile label. <laughs> I mean, the, the name of the label gives away a lot already, doesn't it? So uh, this compilation is called The Beast 666 and the Archangels of Sex. Um, do I need to say much more? Um, I think it's very self-explanatory, uh, featuring uh, some uh, of uh, seminal names of uh, the underground movement of the 80s and early 90s, like Sleep Chamber, Zero Kama, Ein Sof, or The Hunting Lodge. Yeah, now uh, let's have a look at the underground tape scene, because that's where all the real nasty stuff is happening. You know, far away from the eyes of the sensor. Uh, so this is an album by the Hamburg-based uh, kind of proto-techno band called Mondblut. Um, this came out with this booklet. Um, it's called Into Rivers of Blood. And... Uh, the Kingdom of Shaitan. So, um, certainly a lot of uh, stuff here, imagery that I kind of can't show you. <laughs> I can show this. No, I can't show this as well. No, that's not. I'd love to, but uh, the rather mature part of me does not want to. Um, now let's stay with the same project, just under a different name. This is uh, Shadows of Abaddon. We have already talked about the word Abaddon before. Um, and called Children of the Ancient Serpent. So uh, you can kind of imagine that uh, this is not uh, Christian rock music. Self-explanatory imagery. Oh, this stuff I can show you because it's not as pornographic as some of the other things. So this was almost everything. I have just one more example. And uh, that comes uh, from uh, a label that has written 666 into their name. At least back in the day, in the 80s, this was a Japanese underground tape label called Beast 666 Records. Um, just need to cover up this photograph because uh, <laughs> you don't want to show this on YouTube. <laughs> and uh, this is their compilation called um, Garbage Sandwich. So this was released as a two tape compilation um, featuring uh, some of the Kind of big names of industrial from Japan and from the USA. Um, yeah, the cover is uh, obviously a drawing of uh, Madonna. The Madonna, not the Madonna. But uh, you've probably figured that out on your own. And uh, so I have some more tapes from Beast 666 tapes. This is their uh, compilation Helter Skelter 
And yeah, another example where I will not show you the cover picture. Um, this here is uh, <laughs> the compilation Destroy Yo Dick. <laughs> and finally, this was a four tape compilation called Journey into Pain. I'll show you the covers first. But, um, I mean, the charming thing about this compilation is uh, this kind of a vintage, vintage uh, BDSM type of uh, photograph uh, Xeroxed on the spines of the tape jackets. So it uh, creates a full picture if you put them all together. Um, obviously, this has nothing to do with Satanism. It's just a label that called themselves Beast 666 back in the day from Japan. And it's really everything for now. There were some other projects, some other albums I had in my hand that kind of dealt more with uh, dark rituals of sorts. But uh, after a closer consideration, it became quite obvious that their theme is not the Dark Lord, but more like paganism and uh, Nordic Nordic religions and stuff like that. So that's it and I think that's more than enough. <laughs> See you!